The film theory of Gilles Deleuze confuses a lot of people, sometimes to the point that I've heard even professors say that it is fundamentally useless. But I think if we can understand that Deleuze is trying to figure out how that film puts movement into our mind, then we can see the value of thinking about film as something that we as humans assemble with, which is a key concept. We become unified with film as part of watching the images unfold on the screen. And we're not only assembling or becoming part of the images we see, but we're becoming part of the light itself with the framing, with the sound, with editing, but above all with movement and forward movement. And the whole point for Deleuze is not only that we fuse with these materials physically through our eyes and our ears and fusing with the, th the theater itself by placing our bodies in front of the screen or even our home cinemas, the point is, is that we fuse with all of these elements in terms of perceptual thought. Part of film's appeal comes from how film compares to the way we think and the way that we see the world, the way we see the world as a physical reality. And this is not a metaphorical comparison in the way that we might say the body is like a city. We're not saying the mind is like cinema. The mind prefigures cinema biologically. When we look through our eyes, we frame the world. We naturally come equipped with things like focus, and we have our eyes losing focus, and part of our visual frame is always partially out of focus, and we need to turn our attention to the things that we want to come into focus. And we also have light left and right edges to our vision, and we have top and bottom limits that in case what we see wherever we happen to be looking. So long before film existed, the human mind had the ability to play out visual narratives based on the physical constraints of our eyes. Film is really an externalization of that inherent ability, or as McLuhan might say, an extension of that ability. But with film, we see outside of our bodies what had previously been confined within our minds. And for Deleuze, an interesting effect occurs. Imagine that we're watching a runner, and then imagine that the film breaks off. Deleuze has the notion that our minds get so caught up in participating with the image of the runner that even after this image cuts off, our minds will continue creating that image. The rhythm has in some sense taken hold of our thought processes and our individual will and our inner camera, our inner eye. So when we find ourselves thinking about a film we have seen for hours and sometimes days, arguably it may not necessarily be because of any intellectual content, but as with this runner and the image that suddenly breaks off, we've somehow been ensnared by the movement itself. And so we need to complete the gestures we have seen. It's almost like we get into the movement of the actor presenting the character and want to stay with that. And this is what this is part of what Deleuze is referring to with this term, movement image. I and mean, it's part of why he uses that term in a very kind of idiosyncratic way, movement image. And this idea of the movement image gives us another clue regarding how film narratives work. For instance, in terms of setting up and then frustrating, our su frustrating or surprising our expectations... We all know those moments in movies where a character's life and the status quo in which the character lives has been set up, only to be disrupted by some event. And according to Deleuze, part of this feeling where we say, oh, if only things hadn't been disrupted, or when we feel that there's something, some longing for things to return to the way that they were, and we want normalcy and harmony to be restored, I mean, assuming the story had that in the first place, Part of that longing comes from not merely the storyline as such, but from having seen the character in motion. The character has been following one, proje one trajectory, only to be yanked away into having to go along with another. And e this is, again, happening even at the level of the acting itself, of watching the actor's body moving in a certain flow. And we long to return to that original flow once it has been disrupted. We want that movement to be uncomplicated and easy again. And regardless of what one thinks of his films, Spielberg is a master of this in many ways, setting up this state of stability 
only to have some pressing event toss everything into order so that we have gone along with that original flow and want to return to that original flow at the end of the film. And so we are stuck with watching the events, the new events, move along in a disruptive way. And we're, some part of us is still carrying on with that original flow in our minds. So in sum, there is a sense that for Deleuze, the movement we see in film is kind of like lava or some liquid flow that once in motion maintains motion, and we are carried along with that. We go along with that motion. And even when it's disrupted or forced to change direction, at the most conceptual level and at the level of basic biological reality, you know, we as humans are literally made of water, and so we follow this flow. We are literally sort of transformed by what we see on the screen or brought along with it at the biological level as the movement of film flows through our system. And this means that even though film appears to be nothing more than the projection of light, film actually has material properties, and we know at the molecular level this is the case. Light is photons um, and other material, and so it has the ability to affect us materially. The actual division between form and content, or the ways that the form of how a story is told works in unison with how the content of the story operates. But in this conceptualization, I think Deleuze's argument is that the light and the movement that the light creates is even stronger than the story. It has a large sweep that interweaves with our body and creates even more significance than any story ever possibly could.